we speak from the prophetic day word for today that I got, and that is with Hebrews 5 and 6. If you can come with me, please. With your Bible as a book or your Bible on the phone. Um, hallelujah. Let's go for it. First point, go for it. Oh, it's on the way. Read with me, please. Hebrews 5, from verse 11. We have much to say about this, but it's hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. Ish. There's many things that God would want to say to us, but not just to be teachable, my brother, my sister, but if I can push and try to understand what God is saying. Too many times we had this uh, drive-through mentality, you know. You get a word and it, wow, it stands out and you go with it and it has this meaning. Or you spend time with God, you read the word and, and then if, he, if it doesn't make sense, what do you do with it? And there's a lot that this man wants to share with the church. But he says, I cannot. But you are, because you are no longer trying to understand. If I can give myself and to say, Holy Spirit, open, open, open the word for me, please. So that I can learn how to understand. What does it say? When we go on. Verse 13, anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness, teaching about stature. First point, if I'm slow to hear, stop trying to understand. Some of the translations talking about slow to hear. I'm slow in hearing. It's easy. You know, some, for some reason, we are, can be very quick to hear when somebody speaks something negative about us. Or quick to hear when somebody is giving a compliment or not giving a compliment. There are certain things that we are, can be very sensitive to hear. That will determine how our day will be, how it will be bad, or how it will be good. How many people went through something like that, somebody said something bad, and the whole day is over. And you're in a different state of mind and emotionally this. And, but only in our past. Never again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Slow to hear. But I cannot be slow to hear the word of God. I must come alive when I hear the word. And that will not just instantly happen. Number two. Inexperienced. Inexperienced. I'm immature when I'm inexperienced. Now where is my man that he run from here? There's nobody that I can use. Oh yes, you are you. So humble I couldn't even see you. Okay. So I'm giving him a banana. Somebody ate a, a bit of it already, but I would love to give you this banana. Uh, won't you just enjoy your banana, you know? Go for it. Yeah, nice. Oh, wonderful. Hey, is, that's great. Awesome. You like it? You want to? Yeah, just, you can just spit it if you don't like it. Okay. Um, try it again, man. Try, try more. Maybe it's nice now. Like it? Okay, no, no, you don't. You don't have to eat it. Go, go for it. It's okay. You can, yeah. You can just throw that also there. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I hope you will remember that forever. The, just the only thing about this is he was inexperienced with eating a banana. And so we are sometimes with a word. And then the, the banana was not sent by the devil. Ooh. And you're trying to understand the word. You take the word, you eat it, but it doesn't, make sense. It, it, it doesn't work. And you think it's hell and the devil coming against you not to understand the word. But you're just inexperienced with the word. Uh, hello. It says there, 
You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with, inexperienced, with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature. Solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Constant use, by practicing the word. Inexperienced. If you have the infant, when he says, Wah, you put the milk. If the milk is not hot enough or too cold, he will, Wah. hello? And so many times we have that Wah mentality with the word of God, unfortunately. But we're supposed to grow up and become experienced and understand how to interact with the word of God. Hello? But somebody must train us. Somebody must teach the baby, must teach, sorry, the, 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 the little boy. What you do with a banana is you, hello, that must, you must not eat. It's as simple as that. As simple as that. So in a very practical way, the Holy Spirit can give me the experience how to deal with the word. Otherwise, what you suppose eat, the solid food, going to make you sick. You eat the word without the Holy Spirit, it's going to make you sick. It can destroy you. It can kill you. If you do the word without the Spirit. The word without the Spirit, that's what the Pharisees, where the Pharisees saw, and they said, kill that man. Kill that man. When they had the word without the Spirit. Are you with me? So my brother, my sister, the devil is not even involved. It's just inexperience with the word. And it doesn't work for you. You don't understand it. And you just leave the word. And you don't allow it to become part of you. Inexperienced. So God in his grace. Don't give you the banana with a with the skin. He doesn't give you. I wanted him to eat a raw egg. But we thought about his clothes. You know. So, um, just to have an egg and eat the raw egg. And, uh, but the egg is good. The egg is not from the devil. Are you with me? But you can be so inexperienced with the word of God. You can hear teaching here. You can, and you start to get the experience of to wara wara when you hear the word. To focus on other things when you hear the word. Now, how do you want to grow up? How do you want to grow up if you don't know what to do with a potato? And you eat the potato, but, it, but it's raw. You're going to get sick. Are you with me? You take the chicken and you yeah, start to eat the thing like a dog would eat it. Oh, don't even think about it. And so just plainly because sometimes in the past, not anymore, can be so stupid with the word. But I must interact intelligently with the word of God. In my, with my own intelligence? No, it's not possible. But with the intelligence in the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit will give you intelligence. Holy Spirit will give you the know-how, how to interact with the word. Are you with me? So that God can give you the solid food. Because otherwise you get the steak. What must I do with the steak? So you, you suck on the steak. The whole week, you know, tomorrow you take the steak. It's very, very, very solid food. It's, it's power. It's, it's, it's the word of God. The steak wasn't sent by the devil. But you don't know what to do with the steak. Are you with me? I don't know who of you did it. I was a little bit hungry, but it was younger. And my, my boy, he was doing chewing on the, on the, the boltong. What's boltong in English? I don't know. Boltong is boltong. Hey. Chewing on the biltong. And you know when you chew on the biltong, it becomes very chewy and it becomes white. Anybody saw that? Uh -huh. So when it was finished, I didn't think. But so I took the biltong and I ate it further. It was white already. Uh, soggy white and ate it further. And I got very good reaction. 
I was very successful in wanting reaction <laughs> with the people <laughs> around me. But what I'm saying is, sometimes we do that with the Word of God. Now the picture here that the writer is using with is about the milk and the solid food. And we don't know how to interact. And the word will make you sick if you don't respect the word. That you don't touch the word if the Holy Spirit is not guiding you. You do the word without the spirit. It's from a place where you don't respect the word. Where you say, I will not touch the word if the Holy Spirit is not helping me. Are you with me? Because according to the armor of God, the word of God is the sword of the spirit it's not your sword so you don't go and uh, wara wara with the sword that belongs to the spirit are you with me may god help you may god help me in jesus name number three is then you must get the habit to practice it must become a habit to practice to practice the word for solid food so you start to practice it, how to take the word when, the, when it says you must meditate on the word, you must eat the word. You know, when there's something to eat, and God has bought you everything that you must eat, he didn't say that he's going to make everything. He's going to put the meal together. He gave you some food, but the potato is still raw. Banana is still in, inside of the skin. Hello? Egg is still raw. You need to ask Holy Spirit, how must I interact with this food? How must I eat this food? How must it be prepared? How must I sit with the Holy Spirit? Maybe you must sit and pray in tongues for a while, the one day. Other day, you must just become silent. Other day, you must just, yes, just be open by faith. Come by faith and immediately something will stand out. How must you interact? There could be 20 different things that you need to do. On 20 different occasions, how you must interact. But Holy Spirit can guide you. How are you supposed to do that? Are you with me? The apple, you can just take a bite. <coughs> Immediately. Banana, not. Potato, definitely not. So with some things God wants to share with you. And he wants to share from the word some potato thing. But then you need to pray in tongues. Maybe it's the cooking, the cooking up of the word, if I can say it like that. And Holy Spirit guides you to pray in tongues for 10 minutes. Or maybe for half an hour. Or only you're going to spend time with God. You're going to be with him like for half a day. And then God's going to open up certain things for you. But he wants to open it up for you from a place where it's well cooked. Because there's some solid food that he wants to give you. But on the other day, it's okay. It's not that you must do that every day. On the other day, it's just you have an apple. You, you take the word and there you go. And you're eating even the apple while you're going. No condemnation. No religion that it works in this way. You with me? May Holy Spirit show you that you are not inexperienced with the word. But you gain some experience once, only once you will eat a banana like that. Then never again. You will not forget what happened. True? Okay. Especially if you try to swallow that. God will help you. God will help me. Does it? Number three, number four. Discern good and evil with the word of God. At the end it says, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Oh, good and evil. There's a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And how you distinguish between the good and evil, because the tree of knowledge of good and evil will, you will pass that tree every day of your life. And then you will hear the voice of the snake. But you will stand there with the word of God. To discern what is good and evil, you need the word of God. In the beginning, Eve, at the tree of, good of, of knowledge of good and evil, she stood there and she said to the snake what God said. God said we are not allowed. But let's now evaluate. Why did God say that? Let's just have a conversation about this. Let's just have some 
fellowship with this thing that has a voice that is not from God. If we see 1 Corinthians 13, 13, yes, three remain, love, hope, faith, the greatest, love. Then 2 Corinthians 13, 13 says, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the intimate fellowship with the Holy Spirit be with you. Interesting. The grace of God, that's the ability that he gave you. His ability. His ability to become a child of God. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Amazing ability. Grace. How sweet the sound. His ability given to me that I can be a child of God. But then, let the grace towards you not be in vain. Grace is not, whew, you're missing hell. You must work with the grace of God. The ability that he has given you, not just to be through the Holy Spirit, a child of God, but the ability to break through, ability to be led by the Spirit, ability to do a lot of things, because you are, can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, and that is all based on grace. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the ability that is in the Son, be with you. And the love of God the Father. The energy that drives the Father, the passion in the Father, may that be in you. So that what is driving the heart of the Father will be the drive in the son, will be the drive in the daughter. You, that you will have the same driving force than the Father. Not the fear that drives you, not the anxiety that drives you, not the performance to have this, or the performance and the image to have that. Not that as a driving force. But may you be driven by that what is in the heart of the Father. The driving force of the Father, may that be the driving force in you. Hello. And but the third one, the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Too many times, my brother and my sister, too many times, Holy Spirit is just the fire that must come and do this. The water that must refresh me. The dove that come in gentleness on me. The one that must give me the gifts. The gift provider. But what about the person of the Holy Spirit. He, he doesn't say, may the gifts of the Spirit be with you. May the, the power of the Holy Spirit be with you. May the fire of the Holy Spirit be with you. May the freshness of the Holy Spirit be with you. May the guidance of the Holy Spirit be with you. No. No, 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 no. He said, may the interaction, the fellowship, the friendship with the Holy Spirit be with you. May you, you always remember, he's a person. He's part of the Godhead. Holy Spirit as God. When he sometimes just wants to speak to you. Just show you something in creation. Just show you something. May God open it up for you. Just to have a relationship with Holy Spirit. And not just an agenda with him. So if, if the enemy can hold you away from her, that relationship... He's okay. He don't see you as a danger. Because you can use the name of Jesus, but in the wrong place. You can, you can be involved in a fight, but the devil is not even involved there. Like you have a fight with a banana. But what is inside there is good. It's from God. Why do you fight the banana? The devil is not even there. It was given by God. But become experienced in the word. So that somebody can teach you through discipleship and the Holy Spirit can show you how to open up a banana. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Seek God. Not just seek the answer. But seek God and God will show you how to embrace the goodness that he has for you. Amen. So this good and evil you will discern through the word of God. So be intimate with the word. And you will know this is good, this is evil. Even if the enemy used scripture of Jesus, the temptation, he will say, no, this is not the only scripture. Of You can turn these stones into bread, just like that. Yeah, it's true, can happen. But context and perspective, how to interact with the word, Jesus knew. Jesus knew that. And he could bring perspective through the word. Up to the point that the enemy left him. 
that you can bring the perspective of the word. You know how to interact with the word. That maybe another day the devil will try again. That for now, he sees he doesn't work with you. <laughs> May that be true. In Jesus' name. Right. There we go. Just go and do it. Hebrews 4 verse 12. We are here in Hebrews 5 and 6, but in 4. It says, For the word of God is alive, active, sharper than any two double-edged sword. Penetrates even the dividing of soul and spirit, joint and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. You don't know the attitude of your heart if it's not through the word. Many times people say, you are, you are sharing a lot of stuff. And you say, God knows my heart. Yeah, that's the problem many times. <laughs> but through the word of God, you need to come to the point of knowing your heart. But you will only know it through the word of God. Because in the word of God, you will see his heart. And then you will see your heart and his heart. Is the same or not at all? Uh, you're still with me. Double sharper than any double-edged sword. You walk around with a very, very sharp double-edged sword. You're going to destroy people. You're going to hurt people. And you're going to hurt yourself. Don't walk with the word. The word is dangerous. Don't work, walk with the word without the spirit. You're going to cut people. You're going to destroy people. You're going to hurt people. And you're going to hurt yourself. Very dangerous book. That's why you only touch it with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Sword of the Spirit. And 2 Timothy 2, 15. You want to read with me? Oh, please. 2 Timothy 2, 15. Mark it in your Bible. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker... A worker. Okay, nice. A good worker. No, 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 no. A worker who does not need to be ashamed. Why? Because who correctly handles the word of truth. Who correctly handles the word of truth. You will stand in shame if you don't learn how to correctly handle the word of truth. I need to learn it. Otherwise, I will mess up with this very dangerous weapon, this sharp, sharp, double-edged sword in my hand. Not to stand ashamed with the word. Amen. Now, he's talking about all of this, so that at the end of the day, we need to distinguish between good and evil through the word. But therefore, therefore, you became slack to try and understand. You became like babies, even though you're supposed to be teachers, even though you're supposed to be mature. But you are not handling the word correctly. Because you don't put it into practice. You don't interact. You don't exercise with the word. Going to the gym, and you see what guys do, and they pick up all these big, a lot of stuff, and you go there, and you try to do it. You're going to mess up. You're going to go to the, have to go to the doctor. The, the joints and the muscles, the stuff is going to tore. Hello? Spasms and all this, spasms, and I don't know what else. Because, but, but there's nothing wrong with that thing, that machine. The devil is not in the machine, but you were just stupid in how you try and practice with the machine. There, in the gym. Hello? You need the trainer. You need the Holy Spirit as trainer with the word. Are you with me? Therefore, let us move on. Let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again certain foundations. I must mature. I must grow up. So that I don't just wara wara around in a gym and I just hurt myself. You go and wara wara in this word, you're just going to hurt yourself. And get very discouraged. And not to read the word again. Not to get into the word again. Not to take time with the word. Not to try and understand. Try and do this. You go into the gym and you try to do certain things. It's okay if it's under the guidance of the trainer. You're going to try under the guidance of the trainer to do certain things and it's okay. Trainer will encourage you. Holy Spirit is the encourager. Hello? And he will help you. He will help you step by step what to do. 
But you cannot just, because the egg is from the Lord, and the raw steak is from the Lord, and the banana is from the Lord, you cannot just start eating everything, say, thank you, Lord, for everything, and you start eating. You are sick, and you think, why did God allow me to become sick? Now, it's your stupidity that makes you sick. With excellent stuff that came from God. I need to become experienced in the word. I need to gain experience. Uh, we with one another? Okay, that's number five. So we're going to next one. Foundation, word of Christ. So there's a certain foundation that needs to be laid. But we cannot just stay with foundations, foundations. And then we never build a life. And people look at the Christians, they think, what are they doing? You know? At least we are going. And they built their lives, but on sand. And one day, the only one day it will be exposed. That, that excellent house was built on sand when the real storm comes. But when we build on foundation, we must at least lay the foundation correctly. Otherwise, they look at the Christians saying, those guys, what are they trying to do? You know? They're always in trouble. They always have this. They must always fix this. There's always something that they must fix in their lives and uh, deal with the problem of life. They never have a life, but they just always have to deal with the problem of life. No. We need to get beyond the foundation phase so that we have this interaction with the Word. We have this fellowship with the Holy Spirit. When somebody really met somebody that's their best friend, you know, like this guy that is in love, or you have this best friend, and it's just this encouraging, encouraging situation. Why? So you need to know, you've met the Holy Spirit. You have fellowship with Him. You are fulfilled in this friendship with God that comes through the Holy Spirit. That was the final blessing to the church of 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians where Paul had to deal with a lot of stuff with these guys that are either super spiritual or they're into rubbish in the flesh or they're into absolute super spiritual rubbish. Hello. And he had to tune them. Go and read 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. He tuned the people. But at the end of the day, he blesses them with his final, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father. And the intimate fellowship with the Holy Spirit. May it be with you forever. Please, my brother, my sister, present yourself to the Holy Spirit and say, please. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. You will be like the shadow. And you will be the temple. But why? Why not respect his presence? You have a palace for the king. Hello? So don't give him some messed up place to to live in he decided that you will be his palace temple of the holy spirit okay six foundations so that we can grow up repentance from dead work repentance from dead works now first of all yes you're on your way to hell and then God has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light and you gave your life to Christ you repented repentance that means 180 Turn. Metanoia. The Greek word, word metanoia. That you will turn around. Repentance. Now repentance from dead works. Dead works is the, that's all the rubbish that I need to get out of. But it's very easy to see lying and stealing and adultery and all this rubbish as dead works. As sin. But there's something about dead works. It's even where I do a work. You have a work. You have a business. But in the work that you do, there's death. God is not there because you're out of his will. You need to repent from that classes that you are giving if God is not in there. If that tennis is not from the Lord, it's a dead work that he needs to repent of. If you're in teaching or you're in something, but it's not God's will for you, it's dead works. There's death in it. God, there's nothing of God's life in it. One of the found, lot of foundations, first of all, is get out of that place of death. Death that it, where there's destruction. Not death that leads to life where you are crucified with Christ, but death in circumstances that leads to destruction. But you're doing this for the Lord. But there's death in the work. Are you with me? And that is the, where you need the Holy Spirit. Because you think, I'm doing this for God, therefore it's right. Nobody will kill you. I'm doing this for you, Lord. 
Peter said to Jesus, Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. For what you want to do for me and how you want to give your life to me. Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. Let it not be so that in your works that you want to do for God, God's response is, get behind me, Satan. Repentance from dead works, you cannot unless Holy Spirit get relationship with him and he will show you what is from God what is not from God it's not about lying is a sin speaking truth is not a sin oh you never knew that I mean come on we are talking about guidance so that even in your genuine heart impression in your in your genuineness that it could be absolutely not from God it could absolutely stand against what God wants to do Okay, that's number one. Number two, faith in God. Okay, we all believe in God. Yes, James says the devils believe also. They have more faith about God than what you have. In the past, not anymore, in Jesus' name. But they know who he is. When he came into the land, that guy with a legion of of devils fell before me. Jesus said, you come here to, to punish us before our time. Because they immediately, immediately recognized him. If we could recognize him, that would be amazing. Eh? I gave my life to Christ and I got into, I worked there at a certain psychiatric hospital. And this one guy, he hears voices and then he kills. He hears voices and he kills three to five people. So he's there now in that ward where I worked. You know, all the freaky guys who hear things and then they kill and whatever. And I came and I gave my life to Christ and I said nothing to him and he looked at me. And he cursed and he sweared to Jesus. I was so encouraged. I didn't know about demons or anything about that. I was in a certain type of church uh, and saw certain things. But I just realized that guy has some devils in him. And the devils in him saw the Jesus in me. I was so encouraged, man. Come on. (laughs) He was me. But all I'm saying with that is, it's not just about, I believe God is there. Faith in God when you turn around from the rubbish and God by his grace lead you into repentance then to step away from the rubbish you need faith by faith you are saved faith that comes from the word from the word from the word not other faith but if, when you get the word in it produces faith so that you can get and be saved by faith and then the righteous will walk by faith faith then 1 john 5 you will overcome the world by faith then hebrews 11 says you will please god only by faith everything my brother my sister by faith (sighs) but sometimes when we get into the word we want to understand so that we don't need faith I will do this, but I need to understand. No, you will understand, and your understanding is so that you can be in control because you understand, and then you don't need faith. It doesn't please God. You will overcome by faith. By faith. Hello. Overcome the world by faith. You will walk by faith. You will please Him by faith. You are saved by faith. May God help you. But that faith is in the context of relationship. The devil has a lot of faith about who. He knows who God is, but he has no relationship. It's not a faith that leads to relationship. It's a faith that he will run away. But you must have a faith in the context that it will draw you into relationship. That is the foundation of faith in God. Next one. We're talking about six points. Hey, Ending up with number seven. Doctrine of baptisms. In baptism, my brother is identity. There was some uh, bad doctrine that you just need a few drops of water uh, as a baby and then you are saved and there you go to heaven. And also there's baptism where the word of God talk about you are baptized in Christ, you are baptized into his death. That is not worth water baptism. There's no power, magic power in that water. You're, there's a baptism in Christ. When you gave your life to Christ, you were baptized in Christ because you came 
into the body of Christ. Are you with me? You are baptized in Christ. That's the first baptism. And then through water baptism, you are testifying what already happened. That you were baptized in Christ. Why? Because you crucified with Christ, you died with Christ, you were buried with Christ, you were raised with Christ. That happened when you gave your life to Christ and you became reborn, child of God. And with water baptism, you're testifying about what happened. And then you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, he wasn't with you before? No, no, no. He was in you already. That's Holy Spirit in your spirit. But now, I testify through water baptism what happened. And now, God takes me and put me in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Baptism in the Holy Spirit. And then you find baptism in fire when God is, yeah, hmm. <clears throat> yeah, sorting you out quite very intensely. But we are honoring a baptism in circumstances, a baptism in my weaknesses, a baptism in my, in my relationships, a baptism in everything must be okay around me. Baptism in relationships. If this relationship doesn't work out, I'm totally out of it. If this one doesn't work out, I get, off, I get offense. If this thing, there's some, some challenges, my heart is hardened. You are first baptized in Christ with a testimony in water, hello, and in the Spirit. That's why in Corinthians also, Paul says to them, to the Corinthians, you were baptized in Moses. Oh, all the Israelites, all that million, how many, how many, in Moses. No, they didn't get into Moses. It was a picture of Jesus as the Savior for one day. And they were baptized in the Red Sea. I'm very sorry, but they didn't get into the water. They went through the water as a testimony. Are you with me? And then they were baptized in the cloud. Baptism in the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? But you need to start to understand baptisms. Because in it, my identity, me, my identity who I am, is found in Christ. So in baptism, I'm talking about in Christ I am. Whoever I can be, whoever I am, in Christ, not in circumstance. Are you with me? Find yourself in that place. This is foundational. This is foundational, my brother, so that we can move on and become mature. Number four, laying on of hands. Somebody must lay your hands on you. What are we talking? Why do we say mandate? The laying on of hands is because God has a calling on your life. He's in you. You are saved. You turned around. You're walking into repentance, more and more and more, more of him, less of you. Yes, hallelujah. You're walking by faith, you're pleasing him, you're getting, oh, you learn how to overcome. Your walk before the Lord is blameless because you walk by faith as the righteous. Hello, you are saved by faith from even whatever rubbish. You are saved by faith for even from your own, own flesh. Yes, baptism, you have your identity in Christ. But then, understand, child of God, you have a calling on your life. And in that calling, the hand of God is on you. Jesus stand up. He says to them, you take the, the word of God. He says, the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to do, to do, to do. Because he has given me a mandate. Why is the spirit of the Lord upon you? Because the hand of the Father is upon you. In you, yes, Holy Spirit. But on you, because the hand of the Father is on you through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit on you is because there's a mandate. You will receive power when your Holy Spirit is coming upon you. Acts 1 verse 8. And because of that, you will be what? You'll be my witnesses. In you, you become a child of God, reborn. Hello? And a lot of things happen in you. And you understand who you are and who you can be. But on you, because there's a mandate. And in the laying on of hands... May that be so, that the hand of circumstances is not upon you. That your circumstances are not controlling you and his hand is upon you. The hand of your flesh, the hand of other people. No, I don't, I feel controlled by that person. Only if you don't understand the hand of God in your life. Oh, Joseph could be feeling that his brothers, they are controlling him. So he needs to fight his brothers that are trying to sell him 
That's just normal. That's just reasonable. <laughs> because they want to throw him in the pit. They want to sell him. What else? And so some of us in the past, not anymore, <laughs> would fight the brothers. But we don't know the hand of God where he is guiding me. <sighs> hand of God. When he was falsely accused and thrown into jail. Where is the hand of God there? The hand of God took him to jail. Hello. <laughs> From jail. Oh, he, he, a lot. Your gifts won't make room for them. Oh, remember me. No. Oh, he forgot about the guy. I'm back in the palace because of that guy in jail. And even for two years, I forgot about him. Until the king has a very nasty dream. Oh, two years ago. You know, the only reason why I'm actually here is because of this man in jail. <laughs> that had right interpretation. Man, man, that's bad. But this guy, not in defending himself, he respects the hand of God over his life. Respect God's hand over your life. Don't fight. And you will see, you'll fight people, you'll fight yourself because you don't know the hand of God over you. But if you surrender that to the hand of God over your life, you will come into places that from jail, from your jail, you will walk into the palace. Not to get authority in the palace, you had authority in jail already. It's just... Some door open and some door closed. But the, you had the same authority in jail than in palace. <sighs> and because that authority was open heaven, you can bring change to the nations, the whole nation's economy. Have that impact in the nation. But understand these principles for that. Number five, we are going for seven. Resurrection of the dead. Yeah, that's one day. One day. What are we talking about? The final T junction on earth. Resurrection of the dead. For those who are going to hell, those who are going to heaven. But in that day, in that day, where you see the fullness of life eternal, let it be so for you that you have an expectation in that because death will not work against you. There is no death with a sting that can destroy you. There is a death that will, bring that will bring destruction. But there is a death that will be for your gain. Is it not that the word says, Christ, for, but for me, Christ is life and die is gain. How will death work for you? When somebody died, my grandpa gained immensely he got a real eternal prophet what happened now he went to heaven i know we will miss them that go before us yes and doesn't say we you cannot cry you cannot grieve that's not that's not what we, we say because you will miss that relationship hello for a short while but for that person you know that is something else. I watched uh, some other movie. It was an okay movie. And, uh, and this guy, he, this man on his deathbed, and he, and he whispered something in his ear. And when he, they went out, the son asked him, what did you whisper in my dad's ear? He said, no, I, I asked him to pray for me. You're supposed to pray for that man. I asked him to pray for me because he's nearly there. So he must be really intensely close to God now. So there he is now really in, uh, in, intensely close to God. Uh, please remember to pray for me now. <laughs> I thought, okay, that's an interesting way of seeing it. But bottom line, what am I saying? My brother, my sister, death will work for you. But not just on that day when you will see the fullness of God. With no pain, no temptation, no weakness. Where you will see the fullness of eternity. But tomorrow, life is Christ, death is gain. What does that mean? Hallelujah, I needed one. Thank you. What are we talking about? Tomorrow, the death of your flesh tomorrow is gain so that there will be more of Christ. Tomorrow, life is Christ, die is gain. Gain of my opinion. The gaining Hello. I don't want that. You must die. You must die. So that I will gain more of it. But tomorrow, I want to stand for my opinion for my, in the past. Not anymore in Jesus' name. 
Let it be so. I'm acquainted with sitting around and wara wara, especially when I hear the word. Then the temptation is so there, so that I will not put in the effort to understand what God is saying to me. Because I'm not pushing for a relationship. If it doesn't come to me easy, then it will not happen. No, your drive through mentality with God is finished. Amen. We are finished with that thing. In Jesus' name. But if there's a death of my flesh, a death of my own thing, a death of my opinion, of my weakness, a death of my fear, a death of my anxiety, it will be for my profit. When there's death in my anxiety, death in my stress. When my fears can die and anxiety and stress and whatever, my performance can die, it's for my gain. That there will be more of Christ tomorrow. The resurrection of the dead. Understand that principle now. And how it's supposed to work now. With the resurrection life that is in you now. Romans 8, 11. I know you're all writing down because just, I know you know everything, but just for the sake of going back to it. Romans 8, 11. So if the spirit who raised Christ Jesus from the dead is living in you, if the one... Holy Spirit, that came and took away the authority of death and brought the Son of God back to life. If that Spirit that did the most powerful, 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 powerful event on earth, if that Spirit is living in you, how much more will He not quicken your bodies, your mortal bodies, to rise up and to live for Christ? Part of the foundation of the resurrection of the dead that you need to know. Number six. It's on a judgment. Oh, luckily, we will not be in trouble. Eternal judgment is yes, not first of all just to do with one day I will miss hell. I will go to heaven. Huh. In eternal judgment, there's the fear. On the nations with condemnation and eternal death that will be on them death in destruction but for me and you first of all there's a intensely eternal shock of his awesome grace because in that day when he will come to you and he will tell you enter the joy that your master enjoys your reward is not all the goodies. Your reward is that you can have the joy that he enjoys. Wow. And that you stand there on the day and you know this is only grace. Why are you not today the son of a father who took a lot of bombs and things and became a suicide bomber and blew up a lot of people, children, babies, all the people and blew up and and think he has a special place in heaven and maybe me also one day i have such a respect for my dad of how he blew up himself in a crowd maybe i will reach that point in life that i will also sacrifice my life by blowing myself up among a lot of people what makes you better that you are today not that boy Absolutely nothing. But today, we don't understand eternal judgment. Today, we don't understand judgment. Today, we don't understand that how shocked we actually will stand there about God's grace over my life. And even I'm not worthy of 1% of His grace that He still gave it to me. That is when I understand eternal judgment then today I will have such a revelation of His grace over my life and not point the finger so easily at others and other churches and other this and this and that, and that in a pride that is actually sick. But in that eternal judgment, I can ask God tomorrow. Say, God, bring judgment on what I do so that what I'm doing in the flesh, that it will be burned away and that what is from you will, will stay. Let's say royalty or rubbish. Let's say royalty or rubbish. So tomorrow you will be busy with royalty. 
you will walk as royalty, or you will busy be busy with rubbish, and you will walk as rubbish. You see yourself as rubbish, you will do rubbish. Treat yourself as rubbish. No, God, just be the rubbish. Go and throw yourself there on the, what's here afterward? Rubbish dump. On the rubbish dump. No, you will never do that. But why do you live among the rubbish? And eat the rubbish. Hello? Like the word says, don't be like the dog that vomits it out and then later goes back and eat it again. Oh, come on. Let us not have that type of way of thinking. So tomorrow, eternal judgment has to do with God. Show me tomorrow. Bring judgment. Bring the fire on what I do so that I understand. This is rubbish. Let it be burned away by your grace, please, Lord, so that I can see. This is gold. Through the fire, the gold will shine more. When you bring your fire on tomorrow, Lord, then I see what can I build further of what is beautiful in my life and what is rubbish in my life. Please let that judgment be upon the work that I do so that I don't waste another 20 years. That through my life rubbish into people's lives that can only destroy them. That my life is working like a poison. You in bitterness, some other guys have some other trouble with somebody, or a parent, or a leader, or somebody out there, or uh, a problem with your boss, or with a political party. But they are working from a place of arrogance, and pride, and bitterness, and all this other haha. Go and give that rubbish from hell to that person, please. Says all the demons in hell, trusting that you will do that. Or you decide, I'm royalty, I'm not a dustbin, I'm not here to hear all the gossiping and all the judgment. And you know, those guys, they are so bad and they are there and there and the government is just like this. Don't curse the government. Who gave you permission to do that? If they are wrong or right, you have one thing. If you have respect for God, you need to pray for them. Otherwise, the first one to be blamed, you, because you're supposed to pray. That's what God asks of you. Because in that government, there, somewhere there's a Joseph, somewhere there's a Daniel called by God to make a difference there. And you bring with, from hell a curse on that brother of yours that are called there as a Daniel or as a Joseph. Why? Who gave you the right for that? So that will not happen anymore in Jesus' name. Amen. You're not the judge. But pray for a judgment on the flesh. In your life. That tomorrow when somebody is speaking to you. You will not think. Are you perfect? You can tell me that. That's rubbish. You hear what that person is saying. And you hear from the one that up. Who is perfect. And let him tell you. Did that guy. Say what I, you want to say. Lord. Yes or no. God can speak through a donkey. Well maybe then we will really listen. If he speaks through a donkey. But. Uh, <laughs> what am I saying? Please my brother. My sister. When people speak to you, when circumstances speak to you, when you hear something, make sure that somewhere you will be able to hear God. What is he telling you? Stop this. Go to the left, not to the right. Understand eternal judgment. First of all, because of the shock of his amazing grace. But then secondly, so that every day you will change and build more into your life that what has eternal value. So this is the last one of foundations to build a life to build a life upon these six foundations so that at number seven we don't have time to look at the rest of hebrews six from verse four to twenty but it in summary so that you will work eagerly with a word of hope as an anchor to your soul he talks about how somebody can see the truth and how on earth can can that guy just turn away and think it's okay but in your work, there must be a passion. There must be an eagerness. Eagerly, there's a passion that drives you. And in your work, you do what you do, but you look ahead at what is coming. And what keeps you stable in what you do, even though sometimes we will not understand what we go through, but what will keep you stable is the eternal, unshakable hope in Christ Jesus till the day that He comes. Creation waits with with eager expectation. And that expectation is based on hope. 
hope that is unshakable because he is our eternal hope. He cannot be shaken. He in your life cannot be shaken. You cannot say this. I don't have hope anymore. Maybe you don't feel hope in your emotions. But you cannot be without hope unless God dropped you and turned his back on you and you're going to hell. Then you have no hope. But if Christ is in you and he will never leave you, never forsake you, then hope will never leave you, never forsake you because he is your eternal hope. Amen. Let's live from that place because we will not understand what is happening in the nations, even Russia, Ukraine, and whatever. No. But with that, you will become mature because you are seeking God. Because you're not getting a wara wara attitude when you hear the word of God and you're sitting, okay, we will be finished in five minutes' time. What if I carry on for another two hours? You won't believe how many, many flesh will manifest. Even in myself, maybe not in you, only in me. But um, I'm saying, let's be so careful. We have such a habit that it must be so long. And if it goes over an hour to an hour, 15 minutes, the trauma, maybe you go and see a psychiatrist then because the pre seven was one hour, 15 minutes. Hello, hopefully not. But you won't believe. I said it because I saw it in me. Sometimes with some people. Hey, 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 hey. God's going to help us. Work eagerly with the word of hope as the anchor of your soul. When you put the anchor down, anchor down, doesn't matter the storm. This boat can only go up to there. There's a boundary. It can only go up to there. Only up to there. Only up to there. There's boundaries for your soul so that your soul will not de- go loose and destroy your life there on the rocks. Oh, no. That your life will not be destroyed. Hope gives you boundaries to be safe. God's hope will give you the boundaries how to be safe. Just be anchored in hope. Thank you, Lord, that you come and help us, please. We need your guidance. We need your grace. God, and I pray for every man, woman in this place, that your grace will be upon them, your enablement, that they will know afresh, I can walk with Christ. I can overcome. I can do this. I pray for such a revelation of your enablement, Lord. But then also the love of the Father. God, that you will give us a new revelation about the passion in your heart. Holy Spirit, you come and you pour out the love of the Father in our hearts, according to Romans 5, 5, Lord. Come and do that afresh, Lord, so that our love will be pure, will be purified, that we will be driven by your love, Lord. That we can love you with the love that you've poured out in our hearts. That we love ourselves with the love that you have given us. That we can love others with the love you have given us. Because in our own emotions, love can be just gone within a few minutes, Lord. Forgive us for that. Teach us your ways in this. But Holy Spirit, please open it up. How to have an intimate fellowship relationship with you. Because only through you. We can look into the word. Only through you, these foundations can be established. So that we can have a life where we become mature in you. Where hope is settled in our hearts. Through the presence of the Holy Spirit. Come and do that for every man, every woman in this place, Lord. Holy Spirit, you who lives in each of these palaces. I pray that they will see themselves the way that you see them. That they will find their identity in you alone. And that they will reach for this excellent destiny that you have for them. So in Jesus' name we pray and all say, Amen, Amen, Amen. amen.